Let's move to the exciting part and start looking at the first demo. This demo is a reflected cross-site scripting attack and it's called reflected because what we're going to enter on the query string here is going to go off to the server and then come back to the browser. So let's look at something here. We can search for tree. Different image searches here. That value goes back to the server and comes back and gets entered into this text box. That in of itself so far is fine. That text actually gets HTML encoded, which we'll touch upon in a little bit. A common way to display status messages, for instance, assume this page allowed you to purchase images. When you're done purchasing an image, it would redirect you back to this page and show you this message, thank you for your purchase. So it's common that these are passed on the query string. And when you run the page, you can see the variable gets displayed right there. And that happens because we have an ASP.NET label and we just assign that text from the query string. And this here, thank you, gets rendered inside of a span, which is what the ASP.NET label does. Now what happens if we make this a JavaScript alert? Will we see this text or will it actually run? And in this case, we see that this JavaScript is executed. This page is vulnerable to reflected cross-site scripting attacks. If we look at what happened behind the scenes, in that same span, now we have script in there. And that's allowable by HTML rules. And the browser sees this as valid JavaScript and executes it as it should based on the document design. So the browser didn't do anything wrong. It's that the developer didn't take care of this issue in this case.